Well, hello, everybody, and my name is Jason DaCosta. Thank you for joining me today on my show called Consistent Preterism. Wanted to do a very brief one today on the word redeemed or redemption. Uh, but first, I wanted to tell you about this new little app that I found that a friend turned me on to called Spin. And it is a app that you can download that allows you to find scooters that you can rent in big cities. For instance, I'm in D.C. right now, and tonight we went out and we drank a couple beers. We had a nice meal, and we did that by way of scooters, very safe, fun-to-ride scooters. So you avoid traffic, you avoid um, waiting for things, you, you avoid um, hefty prices on cab fares or Ubers. They're not, Ubers aren't bad, but you can do much better. This Spin app allows you to find a scooter nearby, and they're everywhere, too, in the cities that have them. It doesn't take very long to find one. You scan your app. It links to your card. You pay a dollar for the scooter. And then 15 cents for every minute that you need it. So just to give you an idea, we rode for like 15 minutes around town looking for a restaurant and finally found one. And it cost all of $3.40. And what you do is you just hop off the scooter, leave it where it is, put the kickstand up, and hit end on the app. And it ends your trip. And it's there for the next person who needs to find it. So you can literally leave these scooters anywhere you want. We were finding them in alleys. We were finding them behind restaurants. I mean, they were everywhere. And then, you know, three grown men running around town like idiots looking for scooters because we're pumped about it. Um, it was Pretty fun, not going to lie. So yeah, check it out. If you're in the cities a lot like I am uh, and you need a place and you need a way to travel um, and you don't want to mess around with cabs and Ubers because that gets boring, especially when you're sitting in traffic, check out the Spin app. And I think Lyft even has it. Lyft, they, I, I was seeing Lyft scooters all over the place as well. And the things go fairly fast. I mean, we, you can get them up to like 15 miles per hour, which isn't bad. Um, you know, speaking of, you know, downtown when you're just jumping from block to block and no, you don't ride on the road. Um, you ride on the sidewalk. So you just cruise on by everybody as they sit in their cars, flipping people off with road rage. So it's, uh, pretty cool. But anyways, <clears throat> today I'm going to talk briefly about the word redemption. All right. And the first place I want to look, um, is Revelation 14, which is a ironclad dagger to the wannabe. So let's pull that up. Revelation 14, uh, verse 3, speaking of the 144,000, it says, They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. Redeemed from the earth. So the 144,000, a.k.a. the 12 tribes of Israel, which it says everywhere, were the only ones who could learn the redemption song. Key word, redemption. Now, the word, the Greek word for redemption is agorazo, okay? And I'm trying to be like Tommy Strawman Mills and actually say these words with a Greek accent so that people think I know what I'm talking about because it helps, right? If you say things with a funny Greek accent, they automatically think you're smart. So I'm going to repeat the word agorazo, okay? So the word is agorazo and... It literally means to purchase or to buy. Okay, let me repeat that. The word redeemed is agorazo, and the definition means to purchase or to buy or to buy back. All right, so these ones who were, re who were redeemed, the 144,000, the 12 tribes, they were purchased by God. They were bought by God. They were bought back by God, all right? And they were purchased by God by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, that was how he purchased them. But let's keep that in mind, that the word redeemed in, this, in the New Testament means to purchase or to buy. And let's go over to Revelation chapter 5. And in Revelation 5, we see, again, this they're singing the song. It's a salvation song. And it says in verse... Uh, Nine, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain. Here it is. And have redeemed us to God by your blood 
out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So again, that re word redeem simply means to purchase. So this could say, and you were slain, speaking of Christ, and you have purchased us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and nation. So Christ purchased and bought back the 144,000, the 12 tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. All right, think about that now. Christ is purchasing and buying back with his blood the 12 tribes of Israel. Now you know why he said he only came for the 12 tribes and the lost sheep. So keep that in mind. And let's look at another portion in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 reads, And in him, having heard and believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Okay, now, if you remember anything back from Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39, when Peter is speaking to the Israelites, he promises them and he speaks to them and he says, the promise of the Holy Spirit is to you, Israel, to your children, Israel, and to all of you who are afar off, as many as our Lord will call. So here's Paul writing to the Ephesians in chapter 1, and he says, You heard and believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So do you see where that's pulled from? That's pulled from Acts 2 when Peter promises that the promise of the Holy Spirit was going to Israel both near and Israel far off. And here is Paul, far off, writing to the Ephesians, telling them that they were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, fulfilling what Peter predicted in Acts 2, how Israelites afar off would receive the promise as well. But the key to take note of is verse 14 of Ephesians 1. Paul says who is, speaking of um, the Holy Spirit, he says, who is the pledge of our inheritance. You ready? Until the redemption of those who are God's possession. <laughs> very, very, very powerful. Okay, so what is he saying here? Paul is basically telling these dispersed Israelites in Ephesus that they are sealed with the Holy Spirit who is the deposit of their inheritance until God's possession is purchased. All right, until God's possession is fully bought or fully purchased or fully bought back. Redemption, okay, redeemed. So who is that? Well, I just showed you from Revelation chapter 14 that the 144,000, a.k.a. the 12 tribes of Israel, were the only ones who could learn the redemption song. The redemption song. They were the only ones redeemed from the earth. That means that the Israelites, the 12 tribes, were the only ones who were purchased with Christ's blood. They were the only ones who were bought with Christ's blood. And look at what Paul tells these elect sheep living in Ephesus. He says, the Holy Spirit is your deposit until the redemption of those who are God's possession. In other words, until Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, is possessed by God, delivered to God, right? The kingdom would be delivered to God at the end, said Paul. And we know the kingdom was Jacob from Luke 1, 31 to 33. And then look at what, um, let's see, what else do we want to look at here? There's a few. Let's look at 1 Corinthians Chapter 6, verse 20. Now, everybody would say Corinthians was written to pagans, right? But nope, it wasn't. Look what Paul says to the Corinthians in verse 19. He says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? So remember the promise Paul made, uh, Peter made back in Acts 2, right? The promise of the Holy Spirit is to you, Israel, to your children, Israel, and to all of you, Israel, who are afar off. Well, obviously, Paul is telling the Corinthians here that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. So clearly, this is in fulfillment of what Peter predicted in Acts 2 yet again. These ones in, Cor in Corinth were indeed Israelites afar off, and they indeed received the promise of the Holy Spirit, just like Peter predicted would happen. Okay, now remember, everybody likes to say, oh... You know, the gospel changed and it went out to the nation suddenly in the middle of Acts and everything changed. But no, not at all. Peter predicted that in Acts chapter 2, right at the start, that the promise was not only to Israel near, 
but it was to Israel afar off. Jesus, in Matthew 24, 14, promised his apostles that the gospel would go to all nations and then the end would come. So they already knew that the gospel was going out far and wide to the nations. That wasn't anything that changed. The way that the story tells the story sometimes causes people to be a little confused and think that this was God sort of, you know, having a change of heart and suddenly allowing the message and salvation to go to ones in the nations. But it, it, it was predicted and spoken of from the very beginning in Jesus's ministry. And it was predicted and spoken of in the Old Testament as well. So this is nothing new. There's no mystery here. And, <clears throat> but look at what he says in verse uh, 20. He says, you are not your own. This is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. He says, you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. Some, some translations say you were redeemed uh, at a price. All right. You were, um, God paid a great price for you, for you were bought with a price. Um, so again, what's the focus here? It's redemption. It's buying back. It's purchasing back these ones who, again, if we tie to Revelation 14, only the 12 tribes of Israel could sing the redemption song. Only the 12 tribes of Israel were redeemed out of every nation, tribe, tongue, and kindred, Revelation 5. So the ones who were bought with a price that Paul is speaking to here in 1 Corinthians 6, yep, same group that was purchased in Revelation 14, the 144,000. Then if we look at, um, let's see, Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it says this, Keep watch over yourselves and the entire flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Well, the entire flock? Hmm. I come only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Could that be who he's speaking of when he speaks of the sheep and the flock? Yeah, I think so. And then look what he tells me. He says, be shepherds of the church of God. Hmm. Shepherds over sheep. Jesus said he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hmm, that's, that's pretty, pretty clear. But look at the last portion of verse 28 in Acts 20. It says, which he purchased with his own blood. So let's, let's get this straight. So in Revelation 14, it says that only the 144,000 were redeemed and could sing the redemption song. That means that only the 144,000 were purchased with his blood. And here in Acts chapter 20, 28, we see it says, Keep watch over the entire flock, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he purchased with his, with his own blood. So if only the 144,000 were the ones redeemed, a.k.a. The, the ones purchased with his blood, and if Paul is telling them to be shepherds over the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood, then who's the church of God? Who's the ecclesia? Who, are, who were the called out ones? Well, again, that ties back to Revelation 5. He bought them and purchased them out from every nation, tribe, tongue, and kindred. Do you see how this is beautifully woven through every book, every passage, every chapter? It's all perfectly in line. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 23, he tells them, You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. You were bought at a price. So again, the purchased possession that the Holy Spirit was given to as a deposit until God fully received them was Israel. It was the 144,000. It was Jacob. And when the fullness of the ones in the nations came in, all Jacob would be saved. And it would be at that time that God would take away Jacob's sins. And like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he would at that time deliver the kingdom, a.k.a. deliver Jacob, to God, and then comes the end. So the purchased possession was Jacob. That means that Christ purchased Israel with his own blood as a possession that was going to be given to God. That's why they were the first fruits, because the first fruits belonged to God. And that's exactly what Israel was, my friends exactly what they were so what i did is i just showed you how revelation 14 and revelation 5 are your anchor texts for this whole redemption concept and they are the end of the stories and they give you that flash forward so you can see how the story ends and at the end of the story you see that only the 12 tribes the 144k were the ones redeemed that's it so then every time in the new testament last days letters 
when you see that you were bought with a price, you were redeemed by the blood, you were purchased by, by God, that has to fall into the 144,000 context because only the 144K were redeemed. So it makes no sense for Paul to be telling people in nations that they were redeemed and they were bought and they were purchased if only the 12 tribes of Israel are the ones that could be redeemed and could be purchased and could sing the redemption song. Do you see the problems? I'm sure all of you do. I'm sure most of you won't admit it. The truth seekers really will. But the liars and the trolls and the dishonest wannabes will deny this, even though it is as plain as black and white. Jesus said he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And all of the Bible confirms it. Anyways, that's all I got for today, folks. I wanted to leave you with a little uh, end line that a friend of mine um, recommended I use. So here we go. We'll close out and leave you with, Toodaloo, you are not a Jew. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.